Well, very good morning and welcome to this vlog. I'm here at Raysbury. I'm on 48 hour session. Arrived sort of lunchtime yesterday. This is my first trip to Raysbury as well. So I thought I'd have a really good look around the lake, a really good walk and, uh, and it paid off. Like all the fish so far. Yes! Get in! First night here at Raysbury. 26 pound on the button. Cannot believe it. Got here. Early this morning, I had a good look around the place. I mean, like a proper good look around. And I uh, saw a few fish boshing out in this back corner. Couple of rods out, solid bags. And about 10 minutes ago, absolutely melted off. A really scrappy battle, finally got her in. And I am absolutely buzzing to have one of these finest Raysbury Classic Carp on my first night. What an absolute chunk of a mirror carp. All right, let's get her back. Hopefully we'll get another one. We've got 48 hours on this session. So fingers crossed we'll get a few. Thank you, beautiful. Let's get you back. Well, very good morning and welcome to this vlog. I'm here at Raysbury. I'm on 48 hour session. Arrived sort of lunchtime yesterday. This is my first trip to Raysbury as well. So I thought I'd have a really good look around the lake, a really good walk and, uh, and it paid off because I managed to find the fish tucked away in a back corner of the lake. And uh, this is prize number two now. So. In the middle of the night last night, the rod fishing down off to a margin, to a fallen tree, absolutely melted off. Stood out there in the, uh, in the cold last night, in the cold and windy rain, playing the fish for the best part of 30, 40 minutes actually. It took a long time to come in, but I was rewarded with a, an amazing Raysbury 26 pound mirror. Absolutely buzzing. And then first light this morning, it's gone again, and I've been rewarded with this 21 and a half pound mirror. Pfft. Words cannot describe how I'm feeling right now. First night, first session, two carp, one night to go. So during my time here at Raysbury, I'm going to go through my tactics, techniques, the bait that I'm using, different rigs, how I'm presenting them and uh, whereabouts I'm fishing on the lake. And hopefully we'll catch a few scaly bangers along the way. All right, let's get this guy back to his watery home. And then I think I'm gonna get the kettle on and then catch up on some sleep. Yes, what an amazing start. There we go, check that out. One last look at her. Absolute buzzing to get off the mark here at Raysbury. Second fish of the session so far on my first 48 hours. What an absolute cracking fish. Right, hopefully we'll have a few more. Like I said, time for a tea, catch up on some sleep. And I think we'll put a little bit of bait out now. Let's see what else we can get. I cannot believe yes. I'm here fishing at probably one of the most iconic venues in the UK, Raysbury One, South Lake. 
And to be here for a 48 hour session, my first session, and to have two Raysbury carp, absolutely buzzing. Especially one of them being that 26 pounder. I just haven't got words for it. Literally, at the moment I opened the gate, drove up that track, saw like the lodge out on the, uh, out on the peninsula bit there. Had a good look around the place. It just screamed quality carp fishing. Although when I went for a walk around, had a good look around, I couldn't, it was really hard to find anything. And that probably comes down to its sheer size and volume. It's about 70 acres and it is all just tree lined snaggy margins and there's about a quarter of the lake half of the lake which is inaccessible um, but now i found out you've got to park up the other side and, and walk through like a housing estate or a cricket pitch to be able to get to some of them swims but on the walk around you can only walk about uh halfway round, so it's quite hard to actually find any fish Finally got sort of back round to where actually where I started, uh, next to where the car park is. Came back down into one of the first swims in the, on the entrance, right on the back of the wind, and I found a couple of fish boshing down in, uh, down in the left-hand margin. As I was sort of setting up and I was getting, getting ready to put a couple of rigs down to where they were fishing, I actually saw a few roll further out and off to my right. So I opted not to fish down on the left, I've put two rods out on a baited spot, not far out, it's only about 19 wraps, and then there's a fallen tree, there's a real big snaggy fallen tree on my far margin, and I've opted to fish about three rod lengths off that. And that's the one that's done me a couple of bites. So, fishing with the Slip D in the latest club cart box, in a little solid bag, has uh, proved to be the winner. So I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to get all three rods now out on the same rig, on the same sort of in the same sort of area along that snaggy margin over there, and hopefully we'll have a few more cracking raspberry fish in this little diary piece. But as we go on, you'll see you'll see uh, see my journeys through raspberry. I keep posting up these little vlogs, little diary pieces as I go, and hopefully you can uh, you can join me in my trials and tribulations along the way and hopefully we'll catch some cracking raspberry carp along the way right time for a tea and then some well-earned sleep well i was just getting some sleep I say getting some sleep, I'd literally just got back in my bivvy and um, now the middle rod, slow progressive take on a baited spot, has peeled off. And look at that. Wow. Every one of these fish so far has really scrapped. I mean, he's really given me the runaround. Hopefully we'll get this one in and that'll be raspberry cart number three. buzzing with this. And this is exactly why I came to Raysbury for a stunning looking carp just like this one. This session, unbelievable. First session here on Raysbury and not only to have one carp but two and now three 
words can't describe it, especially when they're as stunning as this. This one being the smaller of the three so far, at just under 20 pound, but definitely the better looking of the three. All right, time to get a few more spums out, get a rig back on the spot, and try and get another Raysbury cut up. All right, let's get you back. Mega fishing. There she goes. There we go, time to put her back. Try and get some well-earned sleep now, I think. And then later this afternoon, I'll show you what was in that Club Carp subscription box to catch me all these fish. Yes! Let's get another one. Well, here we go again. Can't believe it. That's the rod I've just put back out as well. It's probably only been about, about an hour, if that. Just finally sorted myself out, got back in my bivvy. Jumped into bed for a little bit. To try and just catch up on some sleep. As I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be exhausted tonight. And um, it's ramped off again. I thought bite time had kind of come and gone really. But obviously not. Come on, Raysbury Carp number four. Well, I really can't believe this. Like I said, fish number four on now. And uh, like all of the fish so far, it's put up a real good fight. Real good fight. Even that uh, 19 pounder, the one just under 20, was uh, put up an exceptional fight as well. And this guy, holding ground as well which is normally a good sign that it's going to be a good fish. Weather is absolutely perfect at the moment for carp fishing. It's like overcast, showers of rain, steady wind across the lake. This feels like proper spring fishing now and we've kind of missed that over the last couple of months. Oh, it's just pinging off something at the moment. Feels like it's just weeded me up a little bit, but I'm just going to keep steady pressure on it. And uh, hopefully I swim out. Come on, girl. Oh, I just see it coming up on the top now. It's literally just out in front of me, not far at all. About 20 yards, it's already up on the top. So fishing somewhere like this, loads of snags, there's loads of zebra mussels and other sort of sharp, sort of snaggy bits down in the margin here. And there's big banks of weed out there as well. I want to be dropping the lead, so I don't want to be playing the fish on top of, on top of the water really. Up, up as high as I can in the water. No, don't go down there. To go. I'll try and get him out of it. Apply just a little bit more pressure, try and keep him away from these snags. Do not want him going in these uh, cut trees here. I'll have to put the waders on in a minute. Oh, I can feel the line graunching. Come on, out you come, out you come. Whoa. That was lucky. Yes, all right, just back out into the lake now. There we go, that's better. So see there, I didn't panic, just kept gentle pressure on him. I didn't try and pull his head off. Didn't want him to take any line. I didn't want him diving in them trees. Come on, Raysbury Carp number four. I can see it now. It's just down here in front of me. Oh, and it's a nice looking fish as well. Nice and steady. Yep, 
Get that net ready. Oh, almost fell over. Come on, girl. Come on. Oh, putting up a real good scrap, this one. Oh, the power on that. Yes, that's a better looking fish. Come on, come on. It's not gigantic, but I'll take it. Come on, get in my net. Get in. Yes! Yes, come on. What a fish. Oh, four fish now. Raise myself. Get in. Come on. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe it. An absolute chunk of a fish. It's only been, I haven't even had my rods out 24 hours and I've managed now four fish. And this is definitely going 30 pound. All right, I've jumped in the water with the, uh, with the waist sling because I don't want to pick it up in the net. It's too big to be picked up in the net. So I'm going to put it in the retainer wrap him up and then take him off to the mat. Let's get him weighed. <laughs> wow, absolutely buzzing. 32 pound, eight ounces. Four fish of this session. Rod's haven't even been out in the water 24 hours and I've already had four fish on my first session here at Raysbury. I can't believe it. And this is an absolute chunk of a carp. Four fish. And this 32 and a half pounder. That is why you need to get on the Club Carp subscription box because it will put you bigger fish on the bank and more of them as well. I'll go through a little bit later the contents of that box and what I'm using to catch these fantastic carp. All right, let's get you back to your watery home and let's get another one. Yes, absolutely amazing. Check that out. I can't believe it, I really can't. 32 and a half pound on my first session. All right, let's let you back. Look at that. What an absolute stunning carp. 32 and a half pound on my first session. <laughs> yes, get in. Off you go. Go on. Yes, get in. What an unbelievable session I'm having here. It's got on now, it's about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, it's gone a little bit quiet. So what I'm gonna do is in a minute, I'm gonna wind in the rods, knock up a load of PVA bags, go for a little bit of a wander and have a hot shower. But before I do, I just wanted to just show you very quickly um, the rig that I'm using and how I go about making up my solid bags. So it's the Slip D rig, which was found in the summer subscription box and all the components from Nash. The only thing I'm not using on here is an anti-tangle sleeve. I've just made a, a, a loop about an inch in size and then all I do is loop to loop that onto a size eight swivel and on the same side of that swivel, I'll, again, loop to loop in about a foot worth of lead-free leader, 
again another loop on the other end of that so I can loop to loop it to my main line and you'll see on there there's a little tail rubber as well and that tail rubber just slots over the top of a two and a half ounce inline lead and then that size 8 swivel kind of pushes up inside it as well so every time I get a take I know that I'm going to be dropping the lead. So hook bait of choice is a pineapple pop-up from Baitworks and in my solid bags, my Ridge Monkey Disperse solid bags, I'm using a whole mix of different size pellets. So loads of different sizes, loads of different flavours, loads of different oils, which are going to be leaking off throughout the time that the bag's going to be out there. Great tip, use the krill powder or a powder um, in your solid bag mix and you can get your bags really, really hard. By getting them harder, you can be able to cast them further, more accurate, and when they break down on the lake bed, it leaves you a real nice little pile with your hook bait submerged in, in and amongst it. So I'm going to get three or four of these made up ready for when I get back and then also I'll probably make a few up for tonight in case I have another fish. And it's quite simply a case of loop to looping on a new solid bag and then recasting it back out onto the spot. Just doing a little bit of prep for later before I go off and get a shower. So I made up four or five solid bags ready to chuck out as soon as I get back. Not going to be gone long. I just want to make sure everything's ready for as soon as I get back. Just fi finishing off putting out, again, only three or four bombs. Just out on the spot. Just want to wind in the rods. There's a little bit of bait out there and the fish can come in and just feed quite happily. Cut the bombs on each spot. Just enough to top it up, just to keep the fish there while I'm gone. Right, let's go and get a hot shower, have a little look down that margin, and then we're going to come back, get some rods out, get some food on, and hopefully we'll catch a few carp this evening. in the swim I didn't put the rod straight back out I kind of left it for a few hours put a little bit more bait out and uh, I've just left it without oh it's a big fish that just boshed over there I've just left it for a few hours just to keep the fish uh, grubbing around free of lines and build up their confidence they're back out in the spots now it's five o'clock and already there's one just boshed literally right over behind the camera really I'm on fish feeling confident for another bite and it is looking really really good I must say this venue is absolutely incredible now for someone I, I absolutely love fishing these big gravel pits Farlow's, Thorpe Lee, Thorny Weir, the, the linear fisheries complex all the lakes up there absolutely love day ticket fishing but nothing compares to fishing somewhere like Raysbury just being here the history behind it, the size of it, the water clarity, the, the, how the swims are built and constructed, the facilities, the other anglers around the lake, the fish that reside in the lake, you just can't beat it. I've been dreaming of these days, I've been dreaming of this session for a long time, and I'm finally here, and I'm absolutely buzzing especially to have a Raysbury 30 on my first morning. Well, cheers Raysbury. Here's hopefully some more fish to come. It's looking good tonight. It's overcast, a little bit windy, temperature's pretty even. 
and I'm feeling confident again of another bite. All right, hopefully we'll see you in a bit with a fish. Wow, look at that for a view. What an incredible place. So privileged to fish here. Can't wait to see what the rest of the year's got installed. So tonight's the last night of this little 48 hour session and I'm already excited for my next session. Absolutely buzzing that I've had four fish now. So fingers crossed we have a fifth one tonight. The sun's just dropping, the rods are out on their spots. Hopefully we'll get another one in the middle of the night. So we're fishing 19 wraps out towards the house the other side of the lake. And we're also fishing over to a snaggy tree, fallen tree over on that margin on my right hand side. What an incredible iconic venue. Come on, Raysbury Carp number five. Well, good morning. Bit of an uneventful night last night. I think the fish have pushed off us. So I've wound in the rods. I'm now going for a little wander to see if I can see them in a slightly different spot of the lake. As I've got up this morning, the sun's been beating down and the temperature's really got up. So I'm heading off just around the corner to a little shallow area to see if there's some fish sitting in the shallows. Failing that, I don't think I'm gonna go on a big move because I've only got a couple of hours left. I'll go back, talk to you about the latest Club Carp subscription box and um, show you what was inside this summer one. And hopefully we'll get another fish out, but if not, I've had an absolute incredible first session. Right, let's go see if these fish are sitting in the shallows. Well, there we are. I've come up to this like little area and just behind me, you can see this all this gravel sort of sat here and it's probably only about two, three feet deep, if that. And my swim is literally just off up there. You can just about see my bivy probably in the distance. Um, unfortunately, doesn't look like there's any carp here. That being said though, I'm gonna wait 20 minutes or so just to see if anything turns up because it does look very promising. Failed at, over the other side of the lake, some real snaggy bits, and the sun's been on that all morning. And uh, I can guarantee the water temperature over there is gonna be a little bit warmer than what it is down here with this wind blowing into. So if nothing, if I don't see anything moving around in this area for the last couple of hours of my session, I'm gonna put a couple of solid bags on that far margin. But fingers crossed, we see a carp come into this area really soon. Well, that didn't take long at all. Literally about five, 10 minutes after speaking to you, not even that, the, uh, the carp showed up. Unfortunately, I couldn't get great footage of them because they're a little bit deeper and the, uh, and the wind was blowing across the surface. It made trying to spot them a little bit more difficult, but they're there. Uh, that just goes to show, don't sit behind motionless rods. Sometimes you haven't got to look too far to find where the carp are. And uh, I didn't just sort of come into that area and go, no, nope, they're not here and move off. Waited a couple of minutes and then they showed up in numbers as well. So I'm heading back to the swim and get some solid bags straight out on that spot. I'll probably stick a marker rod out there just to, just to, to kind of find the distance because it's a bit of a chuck. Um, not a float, just a bare lead. Drag it back and uh, find out where that gravel bar is. Wrap it up to the correct distance and then whack out some solid bags straight onto that spot. But things are looking promising again now. I was a little bit despondent this morning. Um, so fingers crossed, we'll get ourselves another Raysbury kit up. There we go, all three rods out now. Just sinking the line on my third rod. And I'm fishing them all, slightly different distances, but onto bits of gravel on that far margin on the left-hand side. And it's like a, it's like a shingle wall, it's uh, all metal cages with loads of brick in it and then at the bottom it's, uh, it's shelves off quite steeply, it's like gravel down into weed and then it comes back up again to that sort of gravelly bar. 
Now one rod is fishing right up into the corner, and the other one midway along that wall, and this one is fishing sort of just on the point of, uh, of that wall over there. End left rod fishing helicopter style with that slip D, and then the other two, the slip D contained in a solid bag or that mix of pellet. We've only got two hours left of the session. I'm feeling confident of another bite, but if it doesn't come, I've had an absolute incredible time. All right, let's get this one on the rest, get Pat down. Hopefully we'll nick another bite before we, get, before we leave. So I'm all packed up now. The only thing I've got left is my rods out and the bed that I've been sitting on. I've got about an hour, hour and a half left of the session and hopefully I'll catch another one before I go. But what an incredible start to these Raysbury Diaries. First 48 hour session, most of it looking around the lake and just getting to know the place. And then having four fish within the first night, what a way to open my account here at Raysbury. I mean, I mean, I mean, I've got that. Hello? Hang on, Benny. Bill, I'll call you back. Yeah, no worries, mate. Check that out. Fish number five. What a way to finish this session. Absolutely blown away. Five fish, 48 hours, first session. Raceby South Lake. Guys, please check out our Facebook page, Instagram page. Also subscribe down below and you can join me along my journey here at Raysbury. Hopefully catching some more fantastic carp just like this one. Couldn't believe it. This guy, last knock-ins, few bleaks on that middle rod, fish that little gravel bar that I showed you earlier. A solid bag. Slip D rig from a summer box. Done me, fish number five. All right, let's get her back, get the rods on the barrow, and then head back to the car. What a result. We'll be seeing you soon.